Hello, welcome to episode 99 of the Corner of Craft podcast. This is a knitting and crochet podcast in which I talk to you about the things that I'm currently knitting and crocheting, yarn that I've recently acquired, and all of that fun stuff. Things I've recently finished, you know, the usual shebang. My name is Hannah, if you are new, hello. If you are not, hello. <laughs> I'm coming at you today from quite a windy and very overcast Nottingham here in the UK. And uh, yeah, I've been absent for a few weeks from YouTube, sincerest apologies about that. Um, Advent time, it's coming to a head. Uh, there's, no other, there's no other way to explain what's happening right now. Uh, my office space, which is where we currently are, it's technically a craft room, but um, it makes it sound fancy if I call it an office space. It's, well, I've got packaging here, that's not very crafty, is it? Anyway, chaos. It's utter chaos up here at the moment. I have so many blue Ikea bags of yarn. <laughs> Too many blue Ikea bags of yarn. Uh, because I've just started packaging the weekly advents. It's very exciting. All of the sturdy sock are packaged. And then I can start wrapping the merino sock. And I'm then going to print the postage out and do all the sturdy sock and then blah 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 anyway I'm waiting for some tea bags to arrive so I can't get too excited or do too too much but sturdy sock are ready to go and I don't want to accidentally send someone on the wrong thing if you're enjoying the podcast it would mean a lot to subscribe but obviously there is no pressure links to all of my social media as always can be found in the description box below and a link to a blog post that I have on my website with everything to do with every project that I mention here it will be listed on the podcast notes are on my website I think I lost track of what I was saying that would make sense uh, I've got an early start this morning because yesterday I had a small meltdown at my husband uh, about how quickly October has appeared where did September go and all of a sudden Advents needs to be shipped. I need to work on colorways for a collection that I launched a date for. I mean, I technically didn't say that it was for a collection, but I heavily implied. And, uh, yeah, time is running out. It's a little bit scary, and I've got a hen party to plan for my sister. Well, I mean, it's already technically planned, but there's still the little bits to do, and everything's happening at once. It's a fun, fun time. Uh, but yeah, I got an early start today, so it's now the afternoon. I've done quite a lot already this morning. We're just bashing through it. I am wearing, because I know you want to know, finally, my effervescent jumper that I showed off in the last podcast, but it's too warm to wear. Um, but now it's actually quite nice. It's elbow length sleeves. This is the effervescent sweater by Amy Sher. Sher. Knit out of pigment and ply in the Escalor, the Leshy colorway on her merino nylon four ply sock base. And uh, yeah, it's really pretty. You can't hugely see a lot of detail in the lace and a lot of the thing, but that's what happens when you use a dark variegated yarn, but at the same time, I love it. Um, w I, would, I would knit this again because I actually really love the yarn and pattern combo. You just can't really see the lace work hugely, but that's also fine. I'm honestly fine with it. So I would say if you are knitting this, either don't go variegated or uh, choose a lighter colour because then you'll be able to see off your see your hard work much better. September was quite a busy month, as I'm sure you can imagine. It was also my birthday month, so I'm a whole year older since when I last saw you. Grand old age of 33. And I took three days off over my birthday, which turned into four days, and then I struggled to get back into work, which is also how I'm behind. But I had I had a nice time. It was alright. I went, uh, Mario was away, because of course he was, because he was on a, off on his friend's stag do. So well planned on my birthday. You know, my birthday was on a Sunday as well, so not that it matters, because Mario does markets on the weekend. Anyway, uh, Friday I took myself out into Nottingham, did a bit of shopping, took myself out for lunch, delightful. Coco Tang, if you're wondering, delicious Vietnamese place. And then went and then my sister and I went to Matlock on the Saturday and then on my actual birthday I just stayed at home made myself some didn't make myself some brownies made some brownies for D&D &D the next day and then half people didn't turn up so I ate brownies that next week there were caramel cornflake top brownies and they were delicious and um then we got Domino's in the evening because Mario came back and yeah it was all right it was pretty chill because I know you're dying to know the tea that I'm drinking today is cold 
because I made it before I did my makeup and straightened my hair. And then I spent ages farting around trying to get a lip colour to work because I went light on the eye makeup because I was going to go bold on the lip. And then I think the lip colour's old. I've chucked it out now because I couldn't make it work but it was going to go very nicely with this. And then I tried several different... Anyway, my lips are raw because I've just I've tried so many different ones and scrubbed them off. I want to be a lipstick person but I'm, I struggle to apply lipstick. And that's fine. That's fine, but my tea is cold. Anyway, uh, on my on my Friday, birthday, birthday Friday, uh, I also went to Bird and Blend and got some of their seasonal tea, which is spiced pumpkin pie, and it's one of my faves. Even cold, it's delicious. So that is what I'm drinking today. I'll pop an affiliate link in the description box below directly to it. If you would like it, and you want to kick a bit back my way, I would hugely appreciate it. Also, Bird and Blend tea advents are available. They do worldwide shipping. I've already got mine. I bought mine. The last few years, Bird and Blend have actually sent me one. But then one year, I uh, I didn't buy one because I thought they were going to send me one. And then they didn't send me one. And then by the time I wanted to buy one, they'd all sold out. So I bought one. So we'll see. If I get sent another one, there'll be a Bird and Blend advent giveaway. But I'm not holding my breath. So uh, yeah, I'll pop the affiliate link in the description box for that one as well. But once again, no pressure. Uh, it's just if you want, if you were gonna order it anyway and you wanted to kick a bit back my way, hugely appreciated. But if not, no pressure, no harm, no foul. All of that fun stuff. So should we start? Should we actually get rolling with this? I'm seven minutes in according to, almost eight minutes in according to my timer. Some of, some of it is me drinking tea and staring into space, which I will cut out. So I've actually got two finished objects. But one of them I've already gifted to my friend. Uh, it's this pair of socks here. And this is made out of an, a skein of Astral Menagerie, which is one of my colourways on the Sturdy Sock base. It just turned out a bit funkier, a bit more colourful than all of the other ones. So I was like, oh, I'll hold it back because it doesn't quite match. And then it was her birthday. I knit this in a couple of days because I went to... Um, actually her house party was knitting it right in front of her and she didn't even notice. I mean, in all fairness, I didn't tell her that the socks were for her until I gifted them to her, so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, because I was sat for so long, I knit these socks very quickly. And also, so they were 60 stitch count socks on 2.5mm needles and I did a 2 by one rib. I did one by one rib on the cuff and then 2 by one rib on the leg, heel flap and gusset. And then standard wedge toe decrease. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. And then just grafted the toe, as one does, you know. And so, yes, that's a finished object that I cannot share with you because I've already gifted them to her. I literally cast them on, or, like, the day after I recorded the podcast, before I even posted it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's annoying, but also fine. And then the other finished thing that I have is this lovely hat. I haven't made a hat in a hot minute, have I? No, I haven't. Um, so, where's the back? Does it matter? Not particularly. I made, so this is the antler toque. This is a pattern by Tin Can Knits and I switched it up a little bit because I did a tubular cast on. Delightful, look at it, beautiful. And this is using uh, two skeins of the Fibre Fox that were in my stash. So to start with, we have this colour, which is Marzipan, on their Merino Nylon DK base, which is 75% Super Merino, 25% Nylon. And then here we have Birthday Cake, which is very difficult to show, but there are speckles. Let me adjust something and see if I can make it work. I cannot adjust anything to make it work, but it looks undyed but it has tiny, very pastel-y speckles of pink and mint green and maybe yellow in it. And so I held them together to make this ant antler toque, which is a nice antler cable up it. And uh, yeah, it's really pretty. I still need to sew a pom-pom on it, so I guess technically it's not a finished object. Let's start this out by messing up my hair before we even get going. I knit the large size because I have a big old bonce. I didn't swatch. Uh, but it calls for worsted weight, so I figured DK with fluff is fine. Um, 
but I only did nine repeats, of, no, eight repeats of the cables instead of nine. The pattern says nine for the large size, but I did eight, and thank goodness I did, because otherwise it would be, I don't know, down here. But, um, yeah. It's cute. It's really cute. So, you know, stash busting. It's happening. It's not the pla It's not the pattern that I'd originally planned uh, in Vlogmas last year. And, but that's also fine because uh, yeah, it's getting it's getting done. So, or I'm get it's getting used. I haven't blocked it because I don't really know how to block hats because I don't have something to block it round. Uh, I've seen that very pink knits. You just do this a few times as it's blocking. Um, every so often just to make sure it doesn't block flat because I blocked a hat for my dad once before I knew it this one I think I knit the hat way too long and two um, it blocked flat which is not ideal so but yeah it's nice but I need to put a pom on it I've got a pale pink one that I was trying to look for before I started filming but I can't find it right this second I didn't want to take all of this yarn out and put it all back in but I do have this one which is from Robin of the Crafty Bird I could use, but I do also have a pale pink one that I bought for the purpose that I could eh, uh, use with it, so potentially. But yeah, it, I, this was my first time using Suri. Um, did I say it was on the Suri cloud base? Maybe. But this was my first time using Suri, and I'm a bit of a Suri convert now because uh, it's delightful and squishy and doesn't go all over your lap and doesn't go all up your nose and is actually quite lovely, so... Maybe I'm a Surrey girl now. Who knows? But those are my two finished objects that I currently have. These need to go in here. Um, because, yeah, I haven't finished anything else. Should we do socks? I'm, I'm on to whips. Let's do whips. I've got a couple of pairs of socks on the go. I've got more than a couple of pairs of socks on the go. But my theory is if I haven't touched them since the last podcast, I don't need to show you. Is that fair? Ah, that's fair. So I can't remember how far through with these socks. I think I had one sock. Maybe I've barely touched these. Because did we have one sock last time? If not, hey, I've got a sock. And then I've started the next one. I haven't knit these a whole lot. Because I pinched the needles to knit the other socks. And then I haven't put the needles back on these. So the needles are way too long. This is actually what I used to knit socks on all the time when I first started knitting socks. I can't believe that now. These are good for two at a time, but obviously I already have one, so I'm not doing these two at a time. This is West Yorkshire Spinner's signature four ply in the something colourway. Bright side, bright something. It's not on the label, it's really annoying, but it is made in Yorkshire. 75% wool, 25% nylon. 400 metres per 100 grams four ply. Um, it's just a nice commercial yarn to knit a pair of socks for Mario because he wears socks or hand knit socks all the time so I thought use some commercial yarn for him so um, his socks don't cost £20 a pair uh, just for him to walk around with no slippers on wearing holes through that I then have to repair so I've got a few more balls up there uh, West Yorkshire Spinners don't get me wrong it's not cheap commercial yarn but it's got wool in so that's also fine and I'm making them match. I've tried to cast on around the same place and I'm going to try to make them match. We'll see. They might end up, you know, sisters, not twins. But the intention, the intention is there. We can but try. And then the other pair of socks that I've been knitting a fair amount, uh, I mean, only recently did I start picking them up. You will see there's a whole other project that I've basically been working on non-stop, which is also why I feel like I'm behind on Advents because I've been having free time in the evenings. I now realise that could have been a mistake and maybe I shouldn't have free times in the evenings. But I've been quite enjoying it. And up until yesterday, up until yesterday, I've been feeling so relaxed about Advents. I'm like, I'm so on top of it and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's almost October. And I haven't actually worked out any colourways for my collection. I've got a box full of duds that are still pretty colours, but not. I'm not 100% sure if that's what the route I want to go in. Although they're looking at one now, it's very nice. Um, but yeah, this is the other sock that I've been knitting a fair amount. Because I think when you saw it, I was maybe here on the leg. This is the sock that I knit through the Barbie film. And so I've knit the heel, I've turned the heel. I did that during D&D. &D. Turn the heel and pick up the stitches. I had to put the knitting down because uh, we got in a fight and then we got fine. So then I got on the round and round and stopped the 
and then was I decreasing? Can't remember. Anyway, and then I had to put it back down again because we got on another fight and I'm pretty sure we're gonna die, but we'll find out on Monday. <laughs> um, we got in a fight that was a little bigger than uh, we are. Because like I say, half the people in the D&D group didn't turn up. So we went off and did our own thing. Um, and now we might all die. But yeah, this is Bardic Inspiration on my Sparkle Sock base. Beautiful, beautiful. But I have a heel flapping gusset, which I seem to be going through a heel flapping gusset phase at the moment. Oh, blue sky. Seems to be going through a heel flapping gusset phase at the moment. Uh, which I'm loving and they just fit my foot so well but I do also like a new depths heel but I think because for Mario I was doing heel flap and gusset so much it's now just instinctual to do heel flap and gusset it's all right we'll see uh, I do need to go through my sock drawer though and sort them out into pairs and also uh, socks that don't fit me very well either I need to frog them or uh, put, put, pop them in a charity shop bag um, because if they're not, because they might fit someone else, but yeah, because I'm gonna have way too many pairs of socks, and my sock drawer is not big enough. My jumper drawer isn't big enough either. I think I need to sort out my clothes storage situ because uh, I got a new jumper for my birthday that Mum made me, cardigan, and because Mum knits me cardigans quite and jumpers quite often, I wear them a lot, so I'm absolutely fine with it which is also why she enjoys knitting them for me because I wear them but it means I don't and the yarns she use it tend to be quite bulky yarns or um Aran weight upwards which is fine and lovely and warm and I don't knit that weight of yarn often because I don't buy it behold a ton of four ply um but it means that they take up more space in my drawer and I don't actually have space for them so I think I need to get some boxes to put under my bed put my jumpers in and then I can put jeans in my drawer because I don't actually have space for anything and I don't quite understand how <laughs> anyway that's it for sock chatter that's living in my exploding TARDIS bag that Bernadette gave me I love off cuts from a dress that she made herself quick swig of tea and here we have my advents of December's past make along contribution the cat i don't know which one but i think it's kimchi they're both up here i don't know where kimchi went though i think she's hidden somewhere um attacked this <laughs> but that's okay it's cute it's my grumpy cat christmas bag and this is castle that's by castle view yarns i bought it a few years ago and then this is my fade into christmas uh, once again, I haven't touched this in a few weeks and that is purely because I've been working on something else that you've not seen any of yet. Where's the front? Is this the back? This is the back. That's the front. I've woven all the ends in thus far. I was here last time I saw you and it's been five weeks so I've not made a ton of progress but I'm on colour number eight out of 24 and I think I'm just, yeah. I am very much enjoying uh, the shawl, even though, well, throw, I'm not quite sure. Even though I've just said that I haven't really worked on it recently, but that's because I've been working on something else that I'm also excited by. And, um, yeah, I'm still using my Pedro's Plax crochet hook with the little rainbow one. This one's really comfortable. It's more comfortable than my rain cloud one. I think it's got nice curved edges. The on the rainbow itself and the little bloops of rain don't bother me in the slightest I don't even notice they're there um, the B one I have which is my five millimeter hook also very comfortable but I think it's is it my four millimeter hook I can't fully remember or is anyway there's a hook that I have that has a big cloud on it and the clouds edges are square so it it digs in as I'm crocheting but this one delightful and comfortable and nice and smooth finish but um yeah that's where I was where the little mermaid tail is stitch marker that came with the advent and then this is where I am day eight and the prices are fading in am I yeah I am I'm 
just oh this is the first row of the back and forth and I said how last time about how uh, it says you can carry the yarn up the side and I said I couldn't work out how you do that and then it does say that actually it apparently in the in an errata of the pattern it says you can't actually carry out of the side so that's that's fine it's not just me being dense so I have woven in as I've gone actually I've crocheted over the top of the tail as I've gone save a bit of sewing but yeah it's really pretty and then I'll be going into blues and greens I imagine after this I mean I say I imagine this is cast few yarns advent from 2022 it's mermaid themed every skein every mini skein had a mermaid name this is on her merino nylon sock base which is 75 25 superwash merino nylon and very nice I need to have a look through my stash I think I have a light gray that I might do the border on or might do for the border which we'll see um but I really really like it it's nice to do a spot of crocheting every now and then but I'll be sure to work on it because the make along runs from the 1st of August until the 30th of November using any advent even Halloween countdown from 2022 or before to get it used up before uh, this year's advents are opened so yeah that's the fading of Christmas by Yarnia Designs and yeah pretty easy basic crochet pattern not anything too too challenging I mean although saying that things are as difficult as your knowledge level allows them to be or um things are as difficult as your knowledge as I don't know what I'm saying I've been crocheting for many a year so maybe that is why I don't find it as difficult but it's nice to stop and do a spot of crochet every now and then even though like I said I haven't really touched it too too much in the last two weeks this is why I haven't touched it much in the last two weeks this is my final work in progress living in this giant bag from Hobbycraft I believe that I think my mum gifted to me maybe and I, I used it to house all my project bags initially and then this uh, project used so much yarn that it didn't fit in any of my other project bags along with the project itself so I've popped it in this bag and actually it's a very good size so maybe I need to get myself a larger project bag we have a new cast on team we have a new cast on uh, I haven't really knit it too too much in the last couple of days Oh, they're saying that I didn't knit on it during Bake Off. Bake Off's back. I was going to knit round and round and round whilst watching Strictly, but then I packaged stitch markers instead while watching Strictly because Strictly back, Strictly is back as well. Autumn Telly, folks. I love Autumn Telly. Um, yeah, new jumper. I've cast on a new jumper. This was my birthday weekend cast on. I cast it on on the Thursday, and this is where I'm at. So this is the Nightshade Society sweater. This is a pattern by Tristan of Dragon Horde yarn. It is, it's got a fun cable down the sleeve. With the little bobbles. And I've split for the sleeves. So now I'm just knitting round and round and round, which is nice, nice easy knitting. So the yarn that I am using, I'm using Giddy Yarn. If I put the labels in here? Yes. Giddy Yarn on her 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base, which is actually the same base as this. If I have any of this left, I could see, mm, I'm not going to. Uh, which is 425 meters per 100 grams, and this is in the Eeyore colorway, which is this lovely gray color that has little speckles of pink and blue through pink and blue through and a bit of yellow as well I bought that during was it virtual Yorkshire yarn fest potentially this was also stash that I said I wanted to use I was going to use it in a ranunculus and then I was then I saw that Tristan was releasing this pattern and I was like mm, change of plan because one of my is it a toxic trait I don't know if it is one of the things that I tend to do is I have a terrible habit of when I see a pattern I just tend to knit it in the same colour 
that the pattern photo is in, except for this jumper. But I made an Anouk cardigan uh, by is it Andy Satterland, who no longer has any patterns available. Um, and I knit that in the exact same yellow that she knit hers in. I knit the Blue Hour Sweater by Suvi Knits, which is a not in size inclusive pattern, but that was the first jumper I ever knit and it doesn't fit me anymore. <laughs> I need to find someone smaller than me who can enjoy it, uh, who doesn't mind slightly scratchy yarn. I could see if... I could see if Becky wants it. It'll be loose on her. Because she is slighter than I. But it doesn't fit me anymore, so it seems a shame to waste it and she likes um, non support yarn. Anyway, oh, the sleeves might be too short for her though. Anyway, um, yes, and I knit that in almost the same colour that the pattern called for. And then this one I've also knit in the same pattern that the colour pattern called for. So what I did, because you might say, Hannah, what are those black bits? I can't see any pink and blue. Well, you can see a few speckles of pink and blue in person. There's a, there's a, let me do one of these, see if you can see. Because I'm a new Suri convert, I dyed up some Suri for it uh, in a grey colour and then I just put some black speckles on because I got excited. Um, I do have another skein of this. I'm currently knitting with three, but I've dyed up four, but we shall see. I might need it. I can't judge at all. I'm terrible at judging yarn quantities. Also, because looking at the pattern, I might talk to Tristan about this, but she's not been very well. And anyway, um, I think she's fine now. She's been busy, but I might talk to her about this because in the pattern on the thing it says for the cropped size you need this much yarn, for the full length size you need this much yarn, and in the pattern it doesn't actually say what length to knit the cropped one to. It just says the full length one, uh, which is fine because I can just measure this against another crop jumper I have. But um, yeah, I'm knitting the fourth size, which is a 43 inch bust, which I think will give me two and a half inches of positive ease. Maybe three if I'm feeling small chested. <laughs> we'll say two and a half, maybe two, two, two to three, um, which is fine because, yeah, and I want to knit this cropped so I can wear it with um, a black dress that I live in at the moment because it's so comfy and so nice I bought it and wore it first time to East Anglia Yarn Festival but yeah I just I need I wanted some more crop jumpers to wear with it and um yeah so this uh, I've I'm not very far through under the arm yet and I'm just alternating skeins when I get to the beginning of the round, I just drop my working yarn and pick up the one underneath and knit round and round and round until I get back to the beginning. I'm alternating every row. Um, that way you prevent pooling, you prevent stark changes between new balls of yarn. And yeah, I always alternate. I alternated on the back in the middle, but you can kind of see where it was. It's a bit tighter, which is completely my bad. Um, I didn't realise I was doing it. And then yeah, I alternated on this one as well. I think in the back of the middle I did for this one. And up the sleeves I alternated. And this was to prevent pooling. Um, and also because no two skeins of hand dyed yarn are the same. So yeah, I used two balls. I didn't use completely two balls, but I used two balls. And then when I sp um, split the sleeves from the body, I cut one ball of each of the these see the ends and started a new one that way that way then if you know I'm balancing my balls is basically what I'm trying to say I'm just very bad at explaining myself right now and I don't know why I burnt my tongue on my soup <laughs> it wasn't an ideal situation but yeah short rows were nice the bobbles are fun I've knit bobbles in Tristan's patterns before uh, but I've always like physically turned my work to knit backwards and forwards and whatnot to knit the bobbles. But instead of going backwards and forwards with knitting them purling and whatever, I knit one way and then I just knit back the other way, which makes me feel a bit like an engineer. It worked, took me a couple of goes to work out how to do it without twisting my stitches. 
but I've, I've got it now and that makes working bobbles a touch easier. I will say the cable is not the most intuitive chart I have ever seen. Um, there's something happening on every row and they don't necessarily line up. So like if you're doing this twiddly cable you're doing a bobble, things like, like it's not like that. So I did have to read the chart every single round, but that could also just be my brain. Maybe I can't memorize charts very well, but I don't tend to have, I didn't, I didn't memorize this chart in all fairness, but um, yeah, it's really pretty and really fun and I am enjoying it. So little cable up the sleeve. I just think this will be a really nice snuggly, winter knit. I'm worried the neck's a little tall. I maybe should have done it shorter because I've got an extra chin to um, Tristan. So my neck doesn't appear as long because I've got extra chin. Oh, the cat just squeaked. Um, so maybe a shorter collar would have been better but at the same time I can always fold it in if I want to. But yeah, I should have tried this one over my head. But yeah. I don't know why me so squeaking, but she is. Maybe it's because she can hear me talking and I'm interrupting her dream. Uh, but yeah, that is what I have been working on instead of anything else, as I'm sure you can imagine. Mario got back from his stag do and was like, you got a lot of that jumper done. Because I think I was maybe here and I hadn't started it when he left on Thursday, so. <laughs> I had a lot of knitting time. And of course, I have one of my little berry stitch markers on it as well delightful. I had to, it was Blackberry season. It's not anymore. Is it or is it past the 29th? Although this is, this will be posted on the 29th. So it's not Blackberry season anymore, regardless. <laughs> what are they called? Devil berries or something. I can't remember. Wow, so you pick them off the top thing. Anyway, so I have some stack stash acquisitions to share with you. Uh, if you are part of the Biscuit Brew Crew over on Patreon, then you would have already seen these. Apologies for the repetition, but I want to share with everyone else. And that's a very loud helicopter. I ordered some yarn from Selena of Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. when she did her Grishaverse collection. I haven't read the books. I haven't seen the series. don't understand any of the references at all. But there were deep, moody colourways, gothic colourways. And I thought, hmm, yes, thank you. I will take some. So I had a bit of a bit of a party. I know. So to start with, I bought four skeins of No Mourners, No Funerals on her Dystopian DK base, which is 100% Suposh Merino. which is a beautiful, slightly moody, got lots of different colours in. Oh, gorgeous. My plan for this is to knit a jumper with some merino, or oh, sorry, but probably merino. No, not merino, mohair. Uh, I can't talk anymore. So my plan is to knit a truly sweater, holding this together with mohair. I'm going to dye in like a dark charcoal colour, darker than I'm knitting the other one out of. Uh, well, at least that's the aim. And yes, because I've knit a trilogy sweater before, it's by This Bird Knits, and I wear it a lot, and it's so cosy and so comfortable. So yes, that is what that is for. But I also bought Make Me Your Villain on Romanticy Sock, which is 75% superwash from Merino, 25% nylon, 45 meters per 100G, which is like a uh, slate gray, almost black, inky blue colour. Beautiful, beautiful. And I bought Without Armour. And this is going to be some form of colour work jumper. I bought two skeins of this because I didn't know if I wanted to make an elf male. But I might do something, it will be a really subtle contrast because when I put it in black and white it's not high contrast at all. But I think it will be really nice in like an unwind knitwear. Um, on my knitwear pattern. So this is the main colour and this is the contrast. And if I if I just use one, I just use one, then that's fine. I can de-stash the other or knit something else with it. Um, because 
I, this isn't stash enhancement, this is just me um, showing my own future projects. I dyed up these, which is Man With A Fat Purple Hand, although I named it on the thing Man With A Big Purple Hand because I forgot what I was calling my own yarn. Inspired by Scan and Short Holt from uh, The Legends of Vox Machina. And this was my yarn club a few months ago now. And I dyed up some of this, which I called Maddening Darkness, I believe. Mm, I might have called it something else. And so they're going to be held together to make an elf male, which is why I don't think I'll do an elf male anymore. Because I think they'll be really nice together. But, um, yes. I have a lot of jumper plans, haven't I, really? Too many. Too many jumper plans. Too many jumper plans and not enough knitting hands. So that is all I have in terms of knitting. I'm going to very briefly chat shop talk because uh, why not? So for those of you who aren't aware, I own a small business called The Corner of Craft, but I'm sure you do know that because I'm sure you've been here before. And my business is actually going to be 10 in a couple of weeks time, which is bonkers to think about because it's, that's, you know, it's big age. It's double figures. I think that's my first birthday meltdown was when I turned 10. <laughs> I don't think it was, I think I was fine. I think my first birthday melt meltdown was when I turned 20. Ikea, I had a meltdown in the middle of Ikea. But I make handy to stitch markers like the berry that you saw on my jumper and uh, you might have also seen another one on a couple of other projects. And I also dye yarn in colours inspired by Dungeons and Dragons such as Bardic Inspiration, D&D themed. Any hoobries. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Advents have kind of taken over my life. I'm currently looking at so much yarn I can't share with you and um, it's beautiful but I'm annoyed that I can't share it with you yet. However I am going to share with you some things. On Saturday I am taking part in Saturday Night at the Movies. Saturday Night at the Movies. Who cares what picture we see. Anyway it's with a bunch of other yarn dyers and uh, we did it before and it was Stardust theme and I knit this sock using the stardust yarn and so this month we're going halloween themed and i don't watch scary films what i don't need to be i don't need to pay money to be scared essentially so i went with muppets haunted mansion and uh, these are the color this is the color these are the sock sets i am going to have on offer <laughs> i love it so this is called lend me your fears Instead of lend me your ears, lend me your fears. And it's a sock set with black and teal and blue and purple and uh, like a spearminty green. And then the green is in the sock. It's in the mini skein as well. So you get the 100 gram skein and the 20 gram skein. And so that is 400 meters or 437 yards per 100 grams and 80 meters or 87 yards per 20 grams. This is merino sock. I'm also going to have it on a sturdy sock. So this is 425 meters or 467 yards per 100 grams and 85 meters or 93 yards per 20 grams. Beautiful, sturdy sock is 75% superwash, blue face Lester and 25% nylon. I forgot to say merino sock is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, buttery soft, hard wearing socks also comfy so yeah this this isn't D&D &D themed but I decided I there's no point trying to shoehorn D&D &D in everywhere um so I went for Muppets instead <laughs> my other love and then we also have sparkle socks out these look so good on sparkle oh my goodness so this is uh 75 percent super from Reno, 20 percent nylon 5 percent lurex 400 meters 437 yards per 100 grams or 80 meters or 87 yards per 20 grams and these are not going to be available to pre-order like i say i've got too much to do and no time to do it <laughs> in terms of getting advents out the door working on a new collection and whatnot i'll have some more info about a new collection hopefully next week i can talk to you about it because as of right now i've launched a date i've announced a date i'm not going to announce it here just in case i don't do it but i announced the date and then thought yeah i've got plenty of time and all of a sudden it's not plenty of time so i need to sort of knuckle down next week and work on some colorways and then i'll, I'll come back to you in, an, in a, another video Pro not another podcast these are monthly but i'll come back to you in another video and talk to you about it um so keep an eye out for that but yeah there's only going to be limited availability of these i have 16 of each on these two bases and then i have 12 of 
sparkles hock um, because I experimented putting one less in the pan and actually I think it worked out well um, but yeah Ta -da! those of you in the biscuit brew crew if you haven't already there is a video up that I posted on Tuesday of me dyeing up these sock sets if you are interested in seeing how I did it but yes uh, other than that this month's next month's October's Knit Crawl Yarn Club is inspired by the Briarwoods. It's called You're a Handsome Couple because the Briarwoods are a very handsome couple. Deep reds, blacks, purples. I'm trying to go into I'm going to try to make it very different from the Laudner colourway, which will be interesting. Because they've got quite similar colour stories. But you know, we'll see what we can do. But I was definitely overdue a uh, Briarwood colourway. So that is coming in October. So that is going to be available Sunday the 1st of October at 4pm BST. These are going to be available. I forgot to say that, didn't I? These are going to be available Saturday the 30th tomorrow of September at 4pm BST. Ding. I said I told you all the other info and then forgot to tell you when you can actually buy it. My goodness, what? what is this uh, other than that I am on track with advents to get them out hopefully early next week weekly advents will ship and then next week I'm going to work on my collection then the week after I'm going to pack up daily advents I'm very uh, uh, overwhelmed and intimidated by daily advents I won't lie Usually I stick it all in the cupboard in the eve, but I've, I'm making 30 more this year. I don't think I'm going to have the space. So it's going to be a real fun time trying to find the space to put them all. I'm ready for my body to kill me because it's <laughs> it's not going to like it's not going to like what I'm putting it through the next two weeks. It's going to be worth it. I'm so excited for you to get these advents. One, so they're out of my house. I'll be completely honest with you because I am that person. I'm excited to get them out of my house and out of my brain. And also I'm excited for you to open them and to hear what you think of them and hopefully you love them as much as I do. I'm so proud of this one. Uh, it's turned out to be more of a gradient than I'd originally anticipated it being, but at the same time, not mad about it in the slightest. Absolutely love it, so proud of it. I love it so much. So if you're thinking of what patterns to knit and blah blah blah, uh, try to choose something that uh, favours a gradient. Or knit whatever you want, that also works. Um, but yeah, Advents are fully on track. I have made extras of everything. I'm going to wait for everyone to receive their Advents first and then in November I will sell the extras. Obviously I won't be able to guarantee that they'll arrive in time for December the 1st, but I will try well I won't try there's nothing I can do but I will still sell them and you can still open it and enjoy them and if it arrives halfway through you can just open a bunch at once or open two in a day or whatever but I always die extras um I always die extras just in case any go AWOL like last year when Royal Mail lost four of my advents last year Royal Mail lost four of my advents which were UK advents they lost and I wrote to claim for them 600 pounds worth they sent me eight books of first class stamps, which does not equate to £600. <sighs> Luckily, like two weeks later, they all turned up and I was able to sell them off and sell them on. So I didn't actually lose out on any money. But imagine if I had lost out on £600 and they were like, oh yeah, no, not a problem. Here's eight books of first class stamps. Thank you. It's not helpful. Anyway, that was last year. Hopefully that won't happen this year. Ding! Um, other than that, life stuff. I've just kind of given you life stuff updates as I've gone, really. I forgot to say, I've got my cute little pumpkin earrings in. Tis the season. I've not really done a whole, whole lot recently. I had, I had a spell. Um, was it the end of August? Uh, where I did lots I think I was. I think I talked about it just before. I think I filmed this podcast just before it was happening, last podcast. And so I did a lot in a short space of time. And so I didn't really know how I was going to survive because I did something every single day for just over a week. 
uh, something sociable outside with other people. I don't mean just doing something, because uh, I do something every day anyway, but I was forced to leave my house every day for a very long time and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to deal with it but I actually managed to deal with it fine. I was going to say quite well but I don't think that accurately describes it. So fine, I dealt with it fine. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so time has been a bit more chill which is nice. And then I've got a busy week in October going to see Off Menu in Nottingham, very excited, which is a podcast hosted by two comedians. Mario absolutely loves listening to, he listens to it all the time. I think he's developed a bit of a parasocial relationship with them. And then my sister's hen party's happening in October, which is very exciting. And I'm going, Mario and I actually both, I need to book accommodation today, going down to London to see Critical Role live in the Wembley Arena. So that's, oh, amazing. I'm so excited. I'm going with um, Kat and Alex, Kat Weaver and her husband, and I'm so excited. It was a big, it was a, it was a, it was a bit of a spur of the moment decision, uh, but I'm th I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, yeah. I think that's everything that I have to say in regards to life stuff. I don't really think I have too too much else to share. Keep an eye out for. The more information about the Legends and Lattes collection. Next week I'm planning on bashing out a few colourways. I've got, I've mood boarded nine colours. And I think that was a bit optimistic of me. I don't think I can do nine colours. Maybe I can't do nine colours. So, you know, I'll do what I can. Uh, I might aim for five instead. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Keep an eye out for that. I will have some information about that soon. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything I have to share with you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for taking a chunk out of your day to spend it with me. I honestly and truly do appreciate it. And I know that sometimes when I'm trying to sound sincere, it comes across as me being sarcastic. And I think it's partly the accent. It used to happen quite a lot in a coffee shop that I worked in. I was very perky early in the morning. So I used to greet people in said perky manner and would be told by my less perky co-workers that I always sound slightly sarcastic. So I think it is just the nature of the accent, but I do genuinely appreciate you choosing to spend a chunk of your day with me. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you have been up to. What projects are you working on? Are you taking part in the AODP MAL23? Advent of December's Bath Make Along 2023. What are you making? How far through are you? I really need to make the Google form. Come on, Hannah, get a grip. And uh, yeah, how many whips do you have on the go at the moment? Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. I love connecting with you all. If you would like to follow me on social media, links can all be found in the description box below, along with anything else I think you might need, like the links to Bird and Blend, like the links to podcast notes, like anything else that I think you might need. It would mean a lot to me if you were to subscribe. I'm trying to post once a week. I've slacked the last couple of weeks. One of them because it was my birthday weekend, therefore I took it off. And then last week I had no idea what to film because advents. So yes, I'm going to get back into regular filming, regular posting and all of that. And if you want to see a bonus video from me every week, or just a video from me every single week. I have been consistently posting over on Patreon on the Biscuit Brew Crew. Uh, if you'd like to join the Biscuit Brew Crew, you get a bonus video every single week and it would be lovely if you were to be along for the ride. You get to see sneak peeks like these, but no pressure. I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to people who are in the Biscuit Brew Crew, who have joined the Biscuit Brew Crew in the past, who are still in the Biscuit Brew Crew now. It really does mean the world to me. I really, really appreciate it. It really, really helps me out. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy doing it because it's just a nice, slightly more informal space to connect with you all, which is delightful. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just nice, all right? It's just, it's just nice. Anyway, I'm gonna go finish my tea. I'm gonna go cut up some wrapping paper. This is going to be edited this evening when Mario goes to bed. Cut some wrapping paper, maybe wrap some merino sock, sock sets. And yes, back to advents. This was a nice little, hiatus oh i tell you what i'm gonna do while editing knit on my jumper oh i tell you what else i've been doing very much enjoying watching only murders in the building 
Oh, it's very good, isn't it? I'm only on season two at the moment, so no spoilers. But um, yeah, Mario and I are both very much enjoying it. It's sorry, that was completely off track. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for being here. I truly appreciate you. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day, wonderful weekend, and a lovely week, depending on when you're watching this. And I will see you very soon in another video.